Hazel from Hazel A Patterns and welcome to my latest project. So this one is the Sew and Go project case and here it is. This is the tutorial and this is the many pages of pattern pieces that you get. So let me show you what it looks like. So this is the one you see in the photo tutorial and basically it's a case so you can store all of your um, sewing stuff for if you're doing hand sewing so when you go out so for anybody that's going on holiday or who just likes to go on the train long journeys you can do your sewing you know what you're going to use it for you don't need me to over explain it although that is my speciality so <laughs> here we go let's open it up for you so basically inside you can see you've got a little section here which has now I've put um, thread uh, bobbin holders on there because I'm assuming that this one I'm going to use for my cross stitch. You've got a place to put your scissors. Um, you've got various other um, sections here so you could put a stitch ripper or something else. You've got a little needle case which is two parts so you can put any pins below. This is a as you can see a spool holder and the pièce de résistance of this is the fact that it has a storage pouch which turns into a little tray so if you're sitting on the sofa and you want to be able to just delve in and get pieces it's right here so let me show you so it opens out like that and fold it in half I don't know if I've fallen off the camera or not my my cameraman's looking very very serious so I'm assuming it's okay so there we go there's the tray now that's the one I made for the tutorial we have one other here which I have and I'm just going to show you the one we are about to make in this video is this one here now I'll quickly go over the what you get when you buy the pattern uh, you get this photo tutorial. I've printed mine off, but if you keep it on screen, you can then use your PDF viewers uh, facility for a, making the pictures bigger. So if you need to see something in more detail, these are really high res photographs and you can actually take it up to 200, 400 percent just so that you can see everything in more detail. Now you get 12 steps this way around. Um, 14 photographs in total, in fact slightly more than that on the front and I will confess that one of the steps was practically impossible to photograph so if anybody's joining me just to see the storage pouch I will make sure that the um, chapter uh, where to start watching is listed in the comments below. So just a quick go over the pattern, so you get cutting layout all the pieces which you need to join together before you start sewing and I suggest you print this page 12 out every time you want to make the pattern because you can then tick off when you're cutting the pieces out. So let's show you what we're making. These fabrics are absolutely gorgeous. They are dashwood I believe and you can buy them in the UK from uh, Vicky at So Fabulous Fabrics. Again I will have a link below for you. So there we go, we've got our section here, I forgot to mention it's a pocket so you can slide your pattern in, thread spool here and here's your tray again. So without further ado, let's get sewing. So to get going, we first of all need to cut all our pieces out and join them together as per the instructions. So everything has got the black squares that you mark together 
and then we get to cut out our fabrics. Um, you can use this cutting chart to actually tell you which order to cut them out in. And because this is slightly more complicated in terms of how you lay it out, I've done you a nice cutting layout as well. Now, anybody who's in the States and using 18 inch fat quarters, you will need to cut out your bobbin pockets, piece five, from fabric C, unless someone's been very generous on how they're cutting. But if you're in the UK or using metric fat quarters, you can cut them out from fabric B, which is what I've done here. Okay. The next thing to note is a couple of the pieces say mirror image. That's because they are going to go back to back. So you want them both to be the right way up. So that's this piece here and the outer cover. So if you've got any problems while you're actually cutting them out, just have a go at putting one on top of the other to make sure you've got them the right way up. In fact, I'm showing you both of these upside down. So that's that. And the same with this piece here. Because the curve is slightly different one end to the other, I've actually marked which end is has got the shallower curve, so I remember. The next thing we're going to need to do that it says on before we begin sewing is actually mark up our pattern pieces. So it's going to be this piece here. I'll show you how I like to do mine. So I've got my pattern piece here. You can see dots are pretty straightforward. I always pierce the dots with an awl before I get going. Any lines going across or up, what I like to do is actually fold the pattern piece before I put it onto the fabric. So I won't do all of the pieces. There's quite a lot of marks in here. I'm using a disappearing uh, air dry disappearing marker. You could use um, a heat marker, but obviously you need to be sure that you're not going to melt the Velcro or anything else. So that's my dots, first of all. There are a lot of placement marks listed on this pattern, but that is because it's easier to just trace them off than to try and measure them out and get them in the right place. One here. I'm not going to mark on the stitching lines, they're just really a guide so you can see where you're stitching. There's the felt mark. Because these are disappearing markers, they will disappear. And last but not least, I'm going to do it the other way around. So I'm going to pop that up to the top. And there's no point with the elastic on drawing all the lines on. So I'm just going to draw the underneath line. That's it. I'm actually going to use chalk on my outer cover and inner cover because they are um, both dark and I know that I'm going to do them when I need to because otherwise the chalk will brush off. Right, we're ready to get sewing. The first thing we're going to sew is the bobbin pockets. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've actually stitched both of them and I'm just going to show you I've actually finger pressed this seam open. This is a little trick I found for helping to turn the tube. So I've just popped a clip down. I'm actually going to use my pen because I've got it to hand. I'm literally just going to push the clip all the way through. I mean, you could use a um, clip or anything you like, really. 
that wasn't very erudite it's very very warm today I'm so sorry <laughs> my brain is slightly frying so what I've said on the pattern was to position the seam at the bottom so that you can see so so that there's no boat bulk basically so your seam is open so you've got a nice flat piece inside and positioned at the bottom but actually you can move it around to see where you think the prettiest section is because once it's pressed and top stitched it's going to be fine so actually I'm going to do it slightly further up and on this one I positioned it near the top then give it a quick press So you'd need to top stitch this at the top and then what we need to do we've got two sets of two lines we need to position the top one you can either hold it with your fingers or you can clip it um, or you can use pins so we need to edge stitch this one in place so the same depth quarter of a uh, eighth of an inch down and then once this one's top stitched we'll Put that one on the top and edge stitch that one in place. I'll go and do that and then I'll show you the next step. So you can see I have edge stitched my pockets down. They just slightly overlap and then you can see I've got my dot here and a dot at the bottom. Now the two ways you can do this you can either use some washi tape which I often do and stitch alongside the washi tape but I'm going to be really daring today and I'm just going to draw a line with a ruler and stitch on it. I checked that these markers come off before I got started for obvious reasons. It feels very naughty to be drawing with essentially felt tip pen onto fabric. So I'm literally going to stitch in the same direction each time, bottom to top, those three lines. So here we go. You can see I've stitched my three lines. Those uh, pen lines will come out later. The ends are open, but we will seal that in when we go to stitch it all together a little bit later. So the next thing we're going to work on is the elastic, which is going to go just above that line there, because I know that's the thickness of the pen that I was using. So I'm going to use this pattern piece. I've done this before on the so-and-so side pouch. Is I'm going to use the washi tape and I'm just going to slightly take off some of the tack because this is pretty tacky stuff. And I'm actually going to stick it nice and straight directly onto my pattern piece. Then I'm going to just draw on the ends because that's will go on the end of the elastic and then the actual stitching lines. Now, if your scissors that you know you're going to store in your project case are particularly narrow, you might want to make these lines a little bit further apart but these certainly fit the pairs that I have. Now back to the elastic it's in position and what I'm going to do is carefully take this up. It's important not to let it ping and spiral otherwise you'll lose all your lovely marks and then I'm going to Rest it on the elastic and use it to actually stick the elastic to the fabric. Okay, that's one end done. The other end you can put a clip on as well if you want to hold it and make sure it doesn't move around which is what I'm going to do and then 
again take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch I was stitched down um, move the needle across and then stitch back up again for each of these marks here and then we will pick off the washi tape there we go so I won't do all of this because I'm sure you don't really want to watch me just take off tape and tear it off and then use your awl to lift it up sometimes you can tear it all the way through sometimes you can't you just need to go in and pick out the bits Go. So what I would then do, I'd actually lift it up from the underneath to set the stitches neatly and next we're going to put our felt in place. So we've got our felt, you can see the fold line, I haven't drawn it on, I'm just going to use my finger and just check looks about right then I'm literally going to place that here take it over to the sewing machine and stitch in a small box as shown so for this next stage we're going to add the binding that's going to seal in the ends here at this end so I'm going to put this upside down you can see that the pockets have stretched slightly where I've stitched them because they have no interfacing so I'll trim those before we um, get to the next step. Then I'm just going to pop the back on so everything matches and then I'm going to pop the binding to the straight edge. I'm going to take that over to the machine and sew it at quarter of an inch. There we go, so I've stitched that a quarter of an inch. I'm actually going to finger press, or rather with my fingernail, press that away. If you're wondering why this piece of binding, which is straight, is cut on the bias, it's just for consistency, so it matches the other binding. So all we're going to do now is fold it in. Pull any little threads out of the way because they'll get caught. Fold it in and fold it. It should just cover the stitching. I'm going to clip that all along. You can measure it if you want to be really precise or you can just do it by eye. There we go. So I'm going to go and I'm going to edge stitch along the top. You can see the binding has grown slightly when I stitched it because it's on the bias. I'm just going to trim that and trim these extra pocket pieces to side to size before we do the next step. So here we go. I have edge stitched the binding in place. You can just see that on the back it pretty much falls into the ditch which is where we would ideally want it although if it doesn't nobody will know <laughs> so we have our inner cover here now we're going to put it on the end which is the opposite of the end that I've marked so I've made sure it's the right way up and the marks at the other end and then we're literally going to match all the edges flip it in place and then I am going to take it over to the machine and just stitch it at an eighth of an inch all the way around just to hold it in place. So you can see it's all stitched in place, everything's held around the edges. That's it from the back. 
and there we go. So we have our pocket. The next thing we're going to stitch is our spool holder. So I said at the beginning that I hadn't put any of the marks on to the outer cover because it is dark. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now with the chalk. The chalk rubs off really easily. So go now we're using cord elastic for this I like to tie a knot in each end before I get sewing with this because otherwise I tend to find that I lose whatever I'm stitching through um, the stitches if, if the stitches don't go through the elastic and if they do go through the elastic it can actually break the elastic and it doesn't work properly so do that on both of these pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them in place for stitching using the washi tape. Also going to use the hump jumper. So on this one here, there's my Good old washi tape, so useful and so pretty. <laughs> I'm just going to get a short length, pop this here with the knot right to the edge, and then I'm going to put the washi tape over it. is going to be a loop. So again, in fact, I'm going to do this more than once. I'm going to wrap this with the washi tape first, and then I'm going to put another piece on to stitch through to keep the loop together. Because I can see this is a really bouncy elastic. It's trying to escape. And pop the knot right to the edge because I don't really want them over the edge when I'm sewing the binding because it'll leave a little lump. There we go. So I'm going to go and use my hump jumper to get over the elastic neatly and I'm going to stitch over these two sections and I'll come back and show you. So here we go, you can see I've stitched through the washi tape. I'm just going to pull it off. If there's any left inside, it doesn't really matter, but you can pick it all out if you are feeling that way inclined. And of course, this one I've got the extra because I looped it round. There we go. I will pick that bit off in a minute. The ends will be hidden anyway by the binding. There we go. And then when we use this, you'll stick the knotted end through a bobbin spool, bring it around and tighten a knot. It just gives you something to hold your spools or thimble, whatever you wish. So we are going to work on the storage pouch. Um, this hopefully will enlighten anybody who couldn't really see what was going on in the photographs in the tutorial. It's really hard to photograph this step, but once you see it in motion, you'll see exactly what we're doing. So to start off, I've obviously drawn my lines on to show where the fold lines would be later. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw on the position for the hook uh, sorry, the loop side 
of the hook and loop tape. Again, I'm only going to draw on the bottom lines because that will be enough and the side lines so I can see where to sew it. So let's move that Ooh. let's move that out of the way. So I've got my piece here. I've gone for a really bright pink because that's what I had. And what I'm going to do, I always like to do this with hook and loop, is I'm going to use some remarkably sticky glue huh, to just hold it in place. If you use pins with Velcro uh, or hook and loop, you will find that it will actually give a ridged effect rather than sitting nice and flat. So I'm going to hold that in place. You can see there, it's just held enough to stitch and then I'm going to go and stitch it in place. There we go, stitched in place, nice and flat. And the next thing we're going to do is right sides together, match these pieces and stitch down one of the short edges. It absolutely doesn't matter which one. There we go, you can see I have pressed the seam open and now we have one long rectangle. So what we're going to do now is we are going to fold this in half and we're going to stitch the long edge. It's really important with this stage that you leave around two inches either end that is going to be open. So just to make sure I don't accidentally forget, I am going to use my ruler and I'm going to mark, just put a dot on each end. Okay, I will go and stitch that. There we go, I have stitched my seam at quarter of an inch and now I'm going to press it open. Now you're thinking, why bother to press it when it's going to be turned through and it's going to be inside? But it will actually help a lot uh, when you go to turn it through. It will save a lot of time to get a nice um, edge. So what I'm going to do, oh, moving my equipment here, I'm actually just going to use this um, sleeve roll to press it. You could use a fabric, uh, a cardboard tube covered in fabric, or you can just very carefully use the tip of your iron. And just make sure you don't actually press any creases where you don't want them. Now, when you get to the ends, you want to press those open as well because that, again, will help you get a neater finish when it's all done. I might just do one side at a time, particularly because my iron sounds a little ferocious this morning and I'm not entirely sure why. So now we've pressed everything, we are going to turn through. Here we go. So at this stage, it's not important where the seam is. Again, it's important that there are no twists. So there's my seam here. And what we're going to do, we are going to join, put right sides together and actually join this seam, but it's almost like we're joining it from the inside. So, what I won't be able to do is actually pin it all the way around, or I, I could, but I'm not going to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this over to the machine now and stitch it round, and I'll bring it back and I'll show you the next step. So this is what the photograph shows on the tutorial. It's very hard to see exactly what's going on here, but what we're going to do is give it a little pull, and you can now see you have a finished tube, hopefully with no twists in it. Yep. 
And then what I need to do now is just, and it's going to have to be a finger press. Just going to go inside here and see if I can press that seam open. Just makes the finish neater if there's no bulk inside. Here we go. And now what we need to do, I'm going to give it a little shake off camera because we haven't got space under the camera. And we're going to actually go round and make sure that seam is at the bottom. Now where we press that seam open, can you see it's rolling almost instantly to where I want it to go. So your hook uh, loop tape will go on the outside. So bear that in mind when you're pressing. And we're going to go around and press the bottom seam nice and flat. And then we're going to press the top seam ready for top stitching. So there we have it. I have top stitched all around. That's at one eighth of an inch. And I'm going to pop that to one side because we're now going to work on the closure. So the other half for this um, loop tape. So we can start out and we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and stitch, leaving a two inch gap approximately in the middle. We're going to stitch across from one side and then what I normally do is flip it over and stitch across to the other side. I will go and do that. There we go, so I have stitched the seam, left a little turning gap and pressed the seam open. And what we're going to need to do now is roll the seam so it is quarter of an inch from the top, which obviously we can use our seam allowance to judge that. And what you need to be sure of is that the side, that the seam is going to end up on the top on the back. So you can just about see my sewing machine print through there. So that's going to be the front. So pop that there. Not pressing anything at this stage. So I am now going to go over and stitch this side and this side. So there we go, I've stitched down both sides. I like to always stitch from the same direction when I'm doing anything that has a seam that we need to keep in one place. So I stitched down from the top, flipped it over, made sure the seam was still open and stitched down on the other side. So now what we're going to do is just trim off the corners for bulk. And we're going to turn it through. Here we go. Let's check that that's sitting nice and flat on the underside, which it is. I'm just going to press that quickly. So that's going to be the top. The underside is where we're going to put our hook tape. There we go. So I'm going to do the same trick as before. Use a bit of glue stick. This one's running out. And then this is going at the bottom edge, so not the edge with the seam. And I'm going to take that over to the machine and edge stitch that in place. There we go, so you can see I've edge stitched that all around. There it is on the front. You can see if you've got your tension set up correctly on your machine, you should be able to just have a different color thread in your top and bo bottom um, threads just to make things look pretty. So we're now going to mark on the piece, on our sort of cylinder piece, 
where we're going to attach this closure. Obviously it needs to be opposite to the Velcro. So if your seams are approximately at the side, flip it over so it's going to be on the other side. And I would line that up to the uh, fold lines that you've already done. And then that's your top fold line. And we know it needs to be here. I've just folded that back. That's the corner mark there. And the same on the other side. You could draw a line across, but you don't really need to. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. And then this is going to pop down onto there. I am going to do the thing with the glue again, just a tiny bit along the edge to hold it in place. And then I'm going to open this out, take it over to the machine and stitch it around in a box shape. And there we have it. So we've got our nice box stitched on the front and you can see this, the turning gap has completely dif disappeared inside. So now we're going to fold on each of our lines that we've drawn, which are going to be our fold lines. And we're going to stitch it to just about three eighths down from the bottom. We're going to stitch top to bottom each time. Um, I'm just going to mark on here where the three eighths is. Just so that I remember to stop stitching. There we go. So I'm going to do that on all four sides and I'm literally going to stitch top to bottom on each of these folds. And that's actually going to create a stitched fold. And there we have it. So all of our folds are stitched down top to bottom. I've trimmed off all the little fronds. And then we're going to now lay this flat. So the sides with the seams in it are the sides. The hook and loop is going, loop is going to be top and bottom. And there we go. So that's now ready to be stitched on, which we are not going to do next. We're going to do that after we've done the binding. So I'll show you the underside. So there you go, you've got diagonals. You can press those in if you want to. It's not really necessary. But uh, so when it opens up, you can see you're going to have a little storage pouch. There we go. So the next step is the binding. So this is our binding piece. I have transferred the lines because these are going to be cutting lines and the dot, which is here and here. Let me show you on the pattern piece. Now on the pattern piece, you can see the stitching line is only goes over two of the um, strips. So on both sides, but it's not on the same two. So when you go to put them together, Normally you would think, oh, I need it to be flat and the end to be level. You don't need that in this case. What you need to do is match that dot. So the easiest way to do that is put a pin through the dot on one side, find it on the other side. There we go. And then straighten out your seam. Like that. So I take my pin 
out of there. I'm just going to pin it in place. And then when you stitch it, you only need to stitch from here to this line here. And then we're going to cut. There we go. So you can see it looks like a mess at the bottom, but uh, I'm going to press the seam open and then you'll see it start to make some sense. Then, so you can see you've basically got an offset loop. And what we're going to do now is cut. And there we have it, a continuous loop of binding. So this is what we're going to stitch the binding to, just the inside cover, not the outside. So I have gone ahead and transferred my line here from the outside cover, because that's where I really would like the um, seam to end up. And I'm going to go for about three inch tail. And we're going to start clipping the binding. You can do this without clipping it. Uh, I normally do, but I'm going to clip it because there's some really important things to bear in mind with this. So I'm going to clip the straight edge. I'm going to show you how I deal with the curved corner. Now, of course, this binding is really stretchy and people might think, oh, you have to stretch it around the corner. But the really important point is that you don't stretch it around the corner. What you want eventually is for it to sit flat over the actual edge, which means you need this centre edge to be the same um, same dimension as the outer edge. So what you're going to do is use pins, lots of pins to try and just literally curve that edge, push it inwards and put in a pin. This is also very useful if you're dressmaking and you want to put set in a sleeve and you don't want to spend ages stitching it beforehand. So let's push it in. So you're pushing against the um, bias. You don't really want there to be uh, any tucks, of course. And then just do this until you get to the end of this curve. Pins are great because although I said earlier, if you're doing it with Velcro, it can create buckles and loops so that it doesn't sit flat. Of course, if you're doing this, you want it to the pins to take up the excess fabric. Obviously, as you're stitching them, remember to take them out each time before you stitch. There we go, and we're back around to the straight now. So if you're intending to pin it and clip it before you get going, do this on each of the four curved corners. Otherwise, just go over to the sewing machine and when you come to stitch it, I often use uh, an awl or something sharp and pointy to just keep almost pushing the fabric back against itself, lifting the foot and then moving the excess fabric around. There we go, I'm going to go and stitch that. There we have it, I have stitched. Now, 
what you can see here on the corners then rather than them curving round they actually want to sit up and what we're going to eventually do I'll just show you is we will actually be pulling along that curve with our fingers so that when it goes around you can see it sits nice and flat what we need to do next is do a join now I decided on this that I'm going to just do a straight join. You can try and do a diagonal join if you want, but you would need to leave more space to hold that in half. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the usual. Put the two together. That's the line I transferred earlier from the uh, pan piece. I'm just going to mark and then I'm going to go and stitch and then stitch your join. I forgot to mention before when you're going over the elastic remember to use your hump jumper. There we have it you can see I press the seam open that's our join and then we're going to just lightly finger press it away from the piece because the next thing we're going to do is put our pouch on in between these sections of binding. So the first thing I need to do, but you probably won't unless you are using chalk as well is transfer the placement lines for the pouch I should can fold this one back because where I've folded it already you can see where it goes. It should be about a quarter of an inch away from your other line there, which it is. There we go. So let's get our pouch and pop it down. I'm going to put it down close to start with because we're going to stitch across the top before we stitch further down so that sits there tuck your ends underneath before you stitch so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch across from about an eighth of an inch in to about an eighth of an inch in on the other side and on the bottom as well and then I will show you the next step So there we go. What I did each side was tuck that corner underneath. So this part here is actually visibly on the top and you don't see the underneath bit poking through. So what we need to do now is fold this back and we're going to use our guidelines to straighten this up and make sure it's sitting in the correct place. I'm going to put a couple of pins in. And then we're going to stitch it so just in front of where the diagonal folds start all the way down and then we're going to do the same on the other side. So there we have it. You can see it's stitched down on both sides. Just touches the binding at the top, it doesn't matter if a little bit of it is seen, and we are ready to put our hook tape on. So, I've left this until after you've put the binding on because it makes the binding go on more smoothly. So, same as before, I'm going to put a bit of glue to hold it.
I've transferred the marks. Definitely easier if you can do that before you stitch the binding on. And I will go and change my thread colour again and I will stitch that in place. So here we have the stitched on hook tape, just edge stitched. And finally, we have to put the loop tape onto the outer cover. So the very last thing that we have to do for this step is put the loop tape on the outer cover. Now I prepped my foam, as I said, in the pattern. So I've just stitched around the edges. That's so you don't have such a sort of cliff edge where the edge of the foam is. And I have used a bit of spray glue to join the fabric together. Now I need to transfer all my marks still because of the fact that this, uh, because I'm using chalk and the chalk rubs off. So the important point for doing this is this of course is actually um, reversed. So let's turn that over, see which is the right. And that is the, that end there. So that is the inner cover. So I need the hook tape to be on the other end here. There we go. We've got our loop tape attached here. And the next thing we're going to do is do some prep. This is one of those steps that you can just eyeball it or you can spend a bit of time preparing. And I personally find that if you spend that little bit of time preparing, you get a better result in the end. We are going to be stretching the binding around. We want it to be fairly even because ultimately we would like not to see too much stitching on the inside. You can hand stitch this if you want to. You could also stitch it decoratively by doing a running stitch. But I'm actually going to machine stitch it. So drawing the lines on at quarter of an inch in. And these will be hidden when we turn the binding over. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that, but there's literally a line drawn around the outside edge at a quarter of an inch in. So I'm going to pop this round down for a minute. Let's make sure it's the correct way up, which it is. And I'm going to take the piece that we've been working on and pop it on top. Now you might find foam can be a bit of a nuisance. When you cut it, sometimes it springs in. But uh, I found if you tug it just a little bit, you can actually bring it back to the size you want it to be. So, and then by the time you've do done all the other stitching lines on the exterior, it will actually hold it nicely in place. So at the moment, I'm just going to put a couple of clips in to hold it and make sure everything is lined up on the edge. Okay, so now, again, I'm not going to fold it in yet. I'm literally going to pull it over. And what we want to do is make sure that this is quarter of an inch 
where we fold it over at the top. And then pop a clip in. You're going to use loads of clips for this stage. And you'll notice that I've left the curves at the moment. I'm going to come round, just stretch that out, like I mentioned before, with my fingers to make sure it's got an that it goes neatly over that curve there. Because we it needs to still be a quarter of an inch even over the curves. Everywhere needs to be even. There we go, so that's the first row of clips on and you can see it looks nice and even. So we're now going to flip it over. And work from the other side. So let's start. We try and hold it in place with our fingers so you know that it's not going to be slipping around and becoming at the wrong length. And I'm literally going to just go in, take out the clip and put it back down and I've folded it so it just covers the line we drew earlier. And last but not least, you need to go around to the inside and check to make sure that everything is still quarter of an inch and then check that the outside is still even. So, the easiest thing to do with this is to actually use your clips if you put them in just covering the or just at the edge then you know that's where the edge of your binding is on this side and then when you come to the other side you know that the binding should be just past that edge So you're looking for this binding to be even. You can put in some extra clips if you need to. Because of it's on the bias, it might bounce up. So it looks like there's an even amount, pretty much. Yeah, 
that's fine. So the, there's a tiny bit, probably about a millimeter just above, um, just past the edge of every clip. So you know that that is on straight, apart from a couple of places, which I'll just sort. Okay, so I'm going to take you over to the sewing machine and we will stitch this binding on. Oh, one other option you have got, if you're worried about it shifting too much, use a bit of glue stick, particularly under areas that already look like they're bouncing up. That's the combination of the foam and the fact that this is on the bias. But uh, in general, I'm not going to use it. I've just used a lot of clips instead. Right, let's go to the sewing machine. So here we are ready to go. And I'm just gonna start off with this lock stitch that my machine likes to do. And the important thing with this is because it's on the bias, it will keep trying to bounce up. So if you've got something like this all to use, you can squish it down. And if it looks like it's stretching, just lift up the foot. Pop it down again. Let me just see what's under there. That's probably the elastic. So keep moving your all along. Right, let's see how this is. Now I felt a couple of areas where I wasn't very happy with how it went, so we shall see how bad it is on the inside. Actually, that was one of the areas and that actually looks all right. You can see it's slightly gone inside, slightly gone over, but actually, barely shows at all so I'm completely happy with that I'm going to leave it as it is so I ummed and art and I couldn't decide which colour thread to go for and in the end I decided to go with the green that is already in the machine because that way you get to see what I'm sewing and it looks nicer on the edge so I'm not going to put my walking foot on for this because I know a lot of you don't have walking feet. They're really expensive. Um, I have got one. It's a pain to get on and off as well. So I'm sticking with this color here. So this time I'm actually going to reverse back. Just realized I'm banging the camera. So I do apologize. And I ended up going back and drawing on the lines with a ruler and measuring them because this foam is very, very bouncy and it was really hard to get the line absolutely dead straight, which is really what you need to be able to, um, to sew. When I sewed the first version, 
I didn't actually I did put all the lines on first because I was using um, white fabric so what I'm going to do is make sure that for the, each of these pairs of lines, there's two pairs, that I'm going to go in the same direction. Because I'm not using a walking foot, it sometimes can cause a slight ripple in the fabric. So that one's done. I'm going to roll that up slightly and do the second one. Made sure my elastic piece is out of the way so I don't accidentally stitch it down. Then you can use your awl if you need to to make sure you don't get any ripples. So that's those two. Okay, we'll go back over to the main area and I will fold it up and show you the finished article. So this is it, it's finished. So we've got our pocket here, our spool holder here and our pouch here and the Velcro to close it. You can see the lines we just stitched should be parallel and the thread holder spool holder should be in the center so i'm just gonna do that up and the moment of truth there we go so that's all finished uh we'll have a little quick recap in a minute and that's it. Congratulations, you have finished. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, since I've actually filmed this, I have actually added some extra detail onto the pattern pieces so that you won't get confused between your left hand and your right hand like I did. Uh, my driving instructor used to say to me, no, not that left hand, it's all your other left. So it is me, not you. <laughs> so here we go. That's what we have. I use chalk, as you know, on the exterior of this. I used a baby wipe to get rid of all the chalk. So you can see that's fine. And more importantly, my air erasable marker has actually erased itself. So you can't see any lines on the inside. That's it. Just a couple of thoughts of what else you could do if you wanted to. This is a really nice uh, plain piece on the back here. You could easily uh, use a different design on the back so you could actually quilt it with some pretty design. You could find an applique or a patchwork design just to personalise it and make it special for you. Other than that, we're all done. 
Links to buy everything are below. Links to any equipment I've used will also be, alert, be below. And that's it really. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.